Now, as part of efforts to sustain the country's peace, the National Peace Council has schooled over 2,000 students drawn from various institutions on the need to tolerate the views of their colleagues and strive to live in peaceful harmony with others. Uh, according to the Peace Council, businesses will thrive only under a peaceful atmosphere. The Acting Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council, George Amo, speaking at a conference on the theme, Embracing Our Differences to Promote Peace and Social Cohesion in Ghana, admonished the students to refrain from any forms of violence and also report any group of individuals who approach them to engage in violence. In the studio with us is George Amo, the Acting Executive Secretary of the National Peace Council. Very nice to see you, Mr. Amo. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you, too. Now, I notice w what you're doing. You're speaking to the younger uh, generation, uh, seeking to uh, remove any sort of desire or motivation for violence. There are some who will argue that it's human nature. You know, people uh, you know, resort to violence for many reasons, including self-defense and so forth. So how far are you hoping this campaign will go to, to remove the need for you know, vigilante groups and so forth in, the, in their future? Yeah, I think, uh, let me thank you so much, uh, Jojo. Could you? Could you? <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. <clears throat> you see, the Peace Council has a mandate. Our mandate is to facilitate and develop the mechanisms to prevent, manage, and resolve conflicts in this country. The overall aim is to ensure that this country maintains her peace. You know, and uh, we do that through several mechanisms. One is to create the necessary awareness, uh, you know, get the networks that would help us achieve that. We believe strongly that uh, uh, the youth, especially the younger uh, generation, you know, have a critical role to play in ensuring that this vision or the mandate of the Peace Council mm. is realized. So we've been engaging the, the adults, um, the kind of myself and yourself, for uh, some years now. Mm. So this year, uh, preparing for the 2020 elections, we thought reaching out to the youth is, is critical. Mm. So the UNDP, uh, which has been our greatest source of support over the years, uh, once again came to uh, support us uh, to bring this youth that we met this morning together mm. uh, to see how we can imbibe in them, you know, uh, the values of nonviolence, mm. the values of tolerance, the values of love for neighbor. You know, we believe strongly, if anybody who is a peace analyst will tell you that peace begins from the mind. Mm. You know, um, I see you, I see could you, your, the way you dressed can trigger something in my mind, whether to like you or not to like you. you know, so it is important we start with this youth who are still in their development you know, stages, so that they grow to become adults who would want to encourage others to survive or live as they live. You can only live when the other person close to you is living. Mm. If that person is, is, is vanquished, you have no, uh, no locus you know, at all to live. Mm. So we thought this is very, very important as a peace council, a peace institution in this country, mm. to reach out to these children. And I think we achieved uh, the results that we expected. Now, many will uh, um, consider this a very commendable um, move. Thank uh, you. Uh, I suppose I'm now thinking uh, to the future. Yeah. Uh, if this is indeed a part of the mandate of the Peace Council, and you've yeah. managed to gather some young people on this occasion, mm -hmm. you've managed to impart a message to them that hopefully most of them will imbibe. Yeah. Uh, there are so many you know, other young people in our nation, in schools and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we sustain the provision of such a message to, to young people on an ongoing basis. Yeah, with, uh, thank you once again for this question. You know, what we have started doing uh, since uh, three years ago is to uh, reach out to uh, the schools. We don't have to wait and bring them elsewhere, mm. but to reach out to them. Our regional peace councils across the country are doing that. Uh, we started setting up uh, what we have termed peace clubs uh, with social study uh, teachers responsible. Mm. From time to time, our regional secretaries would visit the school, visit the clubs, and see what is it that we can do to improve 
their their you know uh, engagement mm. on on, on nonviolence you know matters. It is important, my brother. Uh, if we're able to reach out to them uh, and we make them peace ambassadors, because that's a vision that uh, uh, we cannot be there all the time. So uh, we try to instill in them these values. They will carry them to uh, homes. They will carry them to their churches, their mosques. They will carry them to the communities where they fellowship with their peers, you know, so that the rippling effect you know, will be that massive. We are hoping that in the near future, this country would have a group of leaders who would have that heart to tolerate. That is the biggest problem. Mm. If we're able to tolerate, government would need the opposition to make a country everywhere. You cannot have people with the same mind to rule a country. It is impossible. It mm. doesn't happen on earth. You cannot have a hospital with only doctors. It is not possible. You would need a patient. You cannot have a society with males without females. You cannot have even Ghana without Ashantis or without Evers. We need to, 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 to tolerate each other, our differences, so that we can live together. Mm. You know, for some time now, we have realized that this country has been polarized, you know, political life for too long. On, in the terms of religion, I think we are better. In terms of ethnicity, uh, we are trying to adjust. But uh, recently, uh, and you bear me out, uh, Joy, uh, you know, multimedia, you have been doing a lot uh, regarding election and campaigns, etc. You realize that when it is about a year to elections, tensions mount, mm -hmm. and politicians don't want to see the opponents, you know, and we think that it is time we start with the children. If we're able to do that very well in the next few elections ahead of us, we are sure that, like it happens elsewhere in the world, where elections are done without, you know, even somebody knowing it, we'll be able to reach there. Mm. That is the vision that the Peace Council has taken upon itself to do. Now, um, the, uh, we have a new curriculum at the basic level. Um, yeah. I don't know whether the Peace Council has uh, averted, averted its mind to the contents of that curriculum. Do you feel that it does enough? you know, to instill some of these values that you mentioned into our, our younger uh, generation? No, I, I have not um, looked into the details of this uh, new curriculum. I've heard about it. Uh, we have very close relationship with the GES because of the, you know, the, the kind of work we do, you know, but uh, we haven't done that yet. What we would do, because now it is, it, we have very little opportunity to make input into it, but we still have uh, the opportunity GS has given us to go ahead to reach out to the schools. You know, we wrote to them for that opportunity given it to us. So from time to time, we are going to do what we are doing. Uh, we believe strongly that uh, our children are up and uh, they see the differences between uh, the good and the bad. And we believe if you continue in this journey, you know, consistently engage them, mm. we are hopeful that we are going to have a mass of our youth who will be ready to accept each other without you know, much difficulties. Our parents, some of them have created problems for us. Mm. Don't marry from here. Uh, don't speak this language. I remember I was in a place when I was younger, and I wanted to speak the language of the people I was living with. I remember an uncle told me, oh, Kasewe, means here. You see? Mm. So at that tender age, my mind was, don't learn it. But now I sit here and I realize if I had learned that language, it would have added some value mm. to my person here. You know, so uh, their the, the, the time is passing. We are having a new crop of generation. And this crop of generation and the future ones would have to learn this value, which is very key for national development and cohesion. Mm. We need to be tolerant. We need to coexist. You may not like my nose, mm. you may not like the way probably your beer, but we have to learn to live together. You may not like the food I eat. Some people don't eat snail in this country. Others don't eat uh, locusts, you know. But we have to contain each other. Even when you don't like the way I, I mean, where I come from, let us learn to accept the fact that diversity is part of life. Mm. And God has made it so.
Um, now, speaking of the mandate of the, uh, the, the Peace Council, yeah. um, recently you've been involved in uh, bringing the two major political parties together to have talks about um, uh, ending vigilantism and so mm. forth. Mm. Uh, what's your assessment of how that process has gone? I think very, very positive. Uh, somebody passed a comment, I think, in our second session of dialogue that this is the first time a very senior person in this country, this is the first time that he has seen uh, the two main uh, parties in a country, in this country, you know, coming together and being able to contain each other for over three hours. So I think we've had some positives. But you are not going to have a mediation or a dialogue of this kind without uh, some difficulties. You are surely going to have it. And uh, notwithstanding... So what have been the difficulties? All the difficulties, I think the latest um, uh, session we, we had, uh, the NDC couldn't turn up. Mm. You know, uh, it so, so happened what's, that... What's the real reason why they didn't turn up? Why did they not come No, up? the reason that we received from them was that... Was that the chairman, uh, Mr. Ofusu Ampofo, had to go to court. Mm -hmm. You know, so and they received a the message very late, you know, to appear before court. So for that reason, they couldn't. Uh, and come. nobody else could come because it's not just the chairman who attends these sessions, is it? Uh, the reason that they gave, uh, which we think is also reasonable, is that uh, most of those, uh, I think, almost those who normally accompany. Um, let me say the team, the NDC team, uh, who normally come for the dialogue sessions, our lawyers. And uh, from what they told us, they are, are those who, uh, you know, support the, the, uh, the chairman in the court proceedings. Uh, they are his uh, lawyers, and for that matter, they needed to be there. In fact, that happened uh, in one of the, of, the, of, the, of the dialogues other than the one that uh, they didn't turn up. And later on, they came around 12 or so, and we, we, we began the process. So we thought uh, it, it doesn't take too much from uh, the process. Did you consider postponing it so they could attend? Yeah, we, we, we couldn't postpone because it came too late in the day. But uh, we, yesterday, I, I, I spoke with the chairman, and uh, we are thinking of uh, holding another uh, another meeting, uh, so to speak, mm. so that we can probably uh, bring the process to a closure. What's to be the, the final output of this process? Right. What would be the product? Yeah. Uh, thank you. We have developed two key documents out of these processes. One is a roadmap uh, that assigns responsibility to, not only to the political parties, to government, uh, to the police service, to uh, civil society, uh, to the National Peace Council, of course, and uh, uh, to other institutions, the EC, you know, that have something to do in ensuring that this country uh, maintains a peace. And uh, we deal, you know, once and for all with this menace of vigilantism. So uh, that document is almost ready, waiting for uh, them, uh, the NDC and NPP to uh, probably append their signatures uh, to uh, make it, you know, uh, uh, to allow us, you know, to, to publish and distribute. The other is a code of conduct that we think would also complement the act, the uh, vigilantism and offenses related mm. act, uh, Act 99, uh, which was passed not too long ago. So we believe that if we have the code in place, it will go a long way to, you know, uh, complement what the law can do. Mm. There are so many things law can do, you know, but there are some that law cannot do. Mm. And we believe that the code will help, you know, to uh, bring up a comprehensive framework, you know, uh, in dealing with this uh, malaise uh, that is greatly worrying all of us. Mm. 